I'm Alp Sarper reporting for Economy Middle East, and today's very special guest is the Maserati Trecale. If you're wondering what we're up to at Economy Middle East, why not subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Instagram, our LinkedIn, and follow us online on our website, and why not pick up our magazine as well? Well, this is the Maserati Trecale. You get three iterations. It starts with the GT, then you have the Modena, which I have next to me, and you have the mighty Trofeo, and next year, will have the, a model, a fully electric model called Folgore. The GT has a 296 brake horsepower engine, the Modena a 325 brake horsepower, and the Mighty Trofeo a 523 brake horsepower. The first two are four cylinders and the Trofeo comes in a six cylinder. They all have eight speed automatic gearboxes. Now we're gonna have a detailed look inside the car, outside the car, we're gonna take it for a drive as well but it is widely expected that the Grecale will do extremely well as these kind of mid-size SUV crossovers have done so well for many of uh, competitor brands. Of course, well, I'd like to thank Altair Motors for lending us the Maserati Grecale. Well, in here, it's a very, very pleasant cabin indeed. I mean, I especially like the way the whole cockpit sits right in front of us. A really rather nice steering wheel with the uh, Trident emblem right in the middle. And then you have your respective controls on the left and right. So you've got your uh, phone and so on on this side, and you've got your cruise control and assisted driving and so on and so forth on the right side. And then you've got your drive modes in a little dial over here, kind of like the uh, Maniteno that you get in a Ferrari, but this is the, um, the Maserati version. Right in the middle, you've got your sporty suspension on and off. When you press that, a little uh, thing comes on the um, emblem again, comes on the um, cluster gauge right in front. Cluster gauge is completely, um, must be about 12 inches or so. It's completely digital. The kilometer gauge maxes out at 270 kilometers, which is rather good. Um, and sort of, you know, this part of the car, very, very nice. You've got, of course, electric seats, no heating and cooling in this particular model that I have. I have, of course, the Modena. Uh, however, I'm sure that is an option. Moving over to the middle over here, if you can look through this camera here, really nice. They've done this sort of reminiscent of the um of the audi center console you know when they have the two bits of uh, screen so the top screen is your infotainment and all your kind of apps and so on a pretty good you know your favorites recent got your categories over here you got media navigation phone vehicle and that's that's pretty good you got the oil pressure the torque the turbo that's that's pretty cool that's actually quite nice to have right in front of you that's about it so that's very nice then you got the um the gear shifter is right over here so you got all your gears here see neutral park drive manual you got the flappy pedals here should you want a little bit more excitement this maniteno i'm gonna call it from now on um you can actually uh, control your drive modes from here so you got comfort sport and gt uh with the sport of course the car gets a little bit tensed up and excited all this is really nice. Two cubby holes, a wireless charger here, a little pocket in here. This all kind of looks really nice and premium. You've got the, for the first time actually, of course, this is the new design language of the uh, of the Maserati range, and we can expect to see this, uh, you know, filtering through to the um, to Levante and so on and so forth. We've got a digital clock here, and something quite cool happens actually when you put that in there to charge. That will change. Well, it did a moment ago. It hasn't changed now. But anyway, you've got a digital clock right there. Your AC controls are over here. Just generally very nice cabin. The doors are opened with this little device here. And you've got a manual device here to close it as well. Really nice, really premium. A complete sunroof, moonroof, whatever you want to call it over here. Up here. You can control all the um, the lights, open the boot from here, 
uh, and of course all the controls for the top. All in all, a really nice cabin to be in, really, really nice, and this light leather makes it feel even more premium and nice. I'm, I, I love it. Visibility is great all around, top notch. Well, actually looking into the screen in more detail, you do get quite a lot of interesting little things here. So when you go to the home screen and then you choose this car icon, it says my car. Now there's an overview of the car, it tells you how many kilometers you've gone and how many days and how your tire is and how your oil level is. Then you can have a look at your tire pressure. Great, see I see 35, 36, 38, 36. So already I can see that there is a little bit of um, inequality over there. Then you have your oil pressure, then you have your drive mode explorer where you have, so the sport mode here, how responsive it is, how stiff it is, acceleration, electronic control, efficiency, that is pretty cool. Then you have your GT mode. Now it shows another chart and um, that also has a different kind of, uh, they've plots the chart within this circle. And then you've got your comfort mode. That is very interesting. Then you have your e-hybrid mode here. That's when you're going, it'll show you uh, where the power is generating from, how much the battery is contributing to it. From what I understand, then you have your performance with your turbo PSI, your torque and your oil pressure. We'll show you that when we do the north to 100. Then you have, well, there we go. Oh yes, there we go. So you have your technical gauges. That's that. You have your consumption history where it goes. It's again, how much are you consuming? Then you have torque management. This is very, very interesting. So on all uh, tires, on all wheels, it has a percentage and it'll show you once you put your foot down, how much of that torque is going to each of the tires. That is actually mighty interesting. Then you got your drag race. So you can actually have all sorts of figures here. The list goes on. Accessory gauges. Ah, now you have your oil temperature, your transmission temperature and your 12 volt battery how it is performing. Mine is performing at 13.6. That is it. But that is very, very interesting. Then you have your controls here. Then you have your settings. I would say the performance option here is definitely the most interesting with all your different um, things that you can look at. Another thing in this clever AC unit over here that you can see is, so what you do is you have your uh, you're driving you know you don't want to get distracted often this is one of my biggest complaints in cars that they make it too fidgety and too digital when you don't have analog controls it can get terribly distracting when you want to change the ac controls however maserati have gone and done something rather clever so what you do is if you slide your hand left or right you see you can adjust the speed of the ac if you do it up and down, you can adjust the temperature. And if I'm doing it on the left side of the screen, I'm doing my one. If I'm doing it on the right side of the screen, the passenger is doing his or hers. And if you do it right in the middle, let's try it. No, it doesn't sync. I wonder if I synced it. Yep, now it's synced. If I sync it, yep, indeed. If I sync it, it will adjust the entire temperature of the car. That's rather clever. Now the 326 horsepower Recale Modena that I'm in is supposed to get to 100 in 5.3 seconds and the top speed of 240 kilometers an hour. Now it doesn't have, doesn't have launch control, however, and I put it into sport mode. And then I'm gonna launch it myself. Here we go. One hundred. Well, that's quite a nice takeoff. But now I'm gonna try it from complete standstill one more time. So I shan't be pressing the brake now. No, the other takeoff was better the way I did it. 100. There we go. Rather nice. 
So the way I did it was I pretended I had launch control. I had left with left foot on the brake, right foot on the accelerator, went for it. That was a much nicer takeoff. It's not a mind-blowing, mesmerizing takeoff, but it is a good takeoff feel. You know, there's a good bit of torque there. As a matter of fact, right here in this rather nice new massive screen in the middle, uh, when you go into performance, you get these three little dials that has uh, your turbo PSI, your torque, and your oil pressure all showing. And uh, when you do the takeoff, or even for any matter, you know, it shows you once you foot pedal to the metal, it'll show you how fast you're going. Oh, well, what a different kind of info that, that, it does, uh, that it shows over here. Now, when it comes to performance, the Grecale goes up against the BMW X3 the Porsche Macan, and of course the Alfa Romeo Stelvio, which it shares the platform with. But if you ask me, the performance is quite all right. Oh, well, for example, the Rekhamet also has an assisted driving. What that means is it's a very clever cruise control. It'll keep you from a safe distance and it'll actually keep you within the lane. So all you have to do is really turn on the cruise control, set it to a, a certain, there we go, set it to a certain speed, put on assisted driving. And what you can do is you can get your hands away and it will just drive you within the lanes. However, if you take your hands off, you see it kind of keeps you in, but then it'll give you a little warning saying, please keep your hands on because if you don't, it will switch off. Now, ultimately, when it comes down to it, this is an amazing piece of machinery. It's very premium on the inside. It's rather nice, sporty. As far as the handling goes, it's a very comfortable drive. So all in all, it is a wonderful car. And I'm sure it'll do wonders for the sales of Maserati because many similar brands we have seen that, um, you know, introducing a mid-size luxury SUV crossover, whatever you want to call these, has really increased their sales and um, at those cars. So the competitors to this particular Enacale, for example, the X3, uh, the Stelvio and the um, Porsche Macan have sold very, very well indeed. I guess ultimately what it comes down to is how much the person who decides to buy this likes the exterior, likes the interior, and likes the performance of it because as far as the price goes, they're all pretty similar. <laughs>